Newman with his uh, bag of synth tricks and his uh, eyeliner and curled lip androgyny made a series of albums in which he explores what it is to be human. And Replicas is perhaps the very best of them. Replicas is a groundbreaking and unique work, a foray into the dystopian electronica that played very much a part in defining that icy brittleness of the 1980s. With its themes of isolation and dehumanisation, it's an album that appealed to the goth crowd as well. It certainly explored the possibilities of the uh, synthesised sound. A sound that would brighten as we moved into the 1980s, as uh, the new romantics, those faux Bowie wannabes with their frilly cuffs and heroin chic demeanour eventually replaced the snarl and spleen of punk. Nihilism and rage replaced by a new expressionism, one defined by all those pop pyros and uh, dandies galloping up the uh, pop charts. Newman continued to hold on to that uh, synth bag of tricks of his with that androgynous uh, sneer of his. You know, and eventually joined the goth fold, very much what many see as the advent of that industrial sound. An artist himself who was a, very much a pioneer in that. But Replicas, I think, very much stands alone as a, an important and inspired concept album. Released in April 1979 on Beggar's Banquet Records, this followed their the self-titled album from uh, Two Way Army. Of course, Two Way Army uh, frontman Gary Newman would eventually assume control of the the brand really and eventually just become Gary Newman and this album if you'll forgive me for quoting Wikipedia Replicas was the first album of what Newman later termed the machine phase of his career preceding the Pleasure Principle and Telecon a collection linked by common themes of dystopian science fiction future and transmutation of man machine if you go deeper in terms of uh, the, the themes and ideas explored by these records, it was very much on what it was to be human in an ever mechanised world. Albums that uh, very much tap into that very kernel of wisdom, as explored by Jules Verne when he said, uh, in consequence of inventing machines, men will be devoured by them. As I said, Newman greatly influenced many of the industrial acts that came later, including Marilyn Manson, Nine Inch Nails, who have uh, both covered uh, Gary Newman material. Even the Foo Fighters, who are obviously not an industrial act, I wouldn't put them in that category, have covered a Gary Newman tune. And let's not forget, uh, well actually, let's forget the Sugar Babes uh, Freak Like Me, which uses Our Friends Electric as the kind of foundation for that number. Replicas, of course, was based on a dystopian work of fiction that Newman himself was working on. This work was uh, heavily inspired by the author Philip K. Dick and was inspired in the not-too-distant future, um, a metropolis where androids known as Mac Men govern and police human on orders from the shadowy grey men. Almost antiseptic story told from the viewpoint of a machine. I think it's absolutely fascinating. And the synths help establish the atmosphere, an atmosphere in which these machines question the value of the world they inhabit. Cold, icy melodies and Newman's very robotic vocals are absolutely sublime here. and speaks beautifully to the sterile architecture that forms this album. One critic has rather waggishly written that replicas sounds like what would have happened if uh, Kraftwerk and Devo found themselves occupying the same studio space. It covers beautifully atmospheric, not only borrows from uh, science fiction, but also, I would argue, film noir as well. It has Newman um, staring out from a window in his room to the waning crescent moon hovering above, and the park, of course, is, is just visible. But it's interesting how Newman's reflection gazes back on himself, this exploration of what it is to be human and machine, or possibly both. Of course, the author, Philip K. Dickens' wonderful book, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, explores uh, not only artificial intelligence, but uh, human emotion in a, on a kind of postmodern landscape. I'm very much reminded of the figure of data in uh, Star Trek Next Generation, where he's constantly looking or trying to understand what it is essentially to be human. But of course, with data, um, the inquiry is uh, humorous and quizzical and affecting uh, 
But of course, that's that's one side of the coin. It can also be quite sinister and destructive, arguably the Terminator franchise there. Emphasising what the wonderful Clive James meant when he said that it's only when they go wrong that machines remind you of how powerful they are. Interestingly, it's argued that Newman takes the title Replicas from the um, Philip K. Dick book, which is simply not true. In the book, they are not called replicants. It was Blade Runner, of course, which is the adaptation, the filmic adaptation by Ridley Scott. He calls the robots uh, machines. He calls them replicants. But let's not forget uh, Blade Runner came two or three years or three or four years after this album. I would also uh, take issue with the use of the adjective futuristic to describe this album. I mean, it's got a very modern buzz and burr, that electronic uh, synth sound, which very, very much underpins a lot of the music as we move into the 1980s, and especially that exploration of these darker dystopian themes. To quote one article, Replicas does present a vision of a time just beyond the current era or an alternative underlying reality overrun with deadly machinations hiding within human forms. I think thematically there's a lot more going on here. I think the themes and idea of this album is modern rather than futuristic, which is the point I was trying to make. Themes such as alienation and disconnection is what's important here. It certainly taps into those early sci-fi films, the avant-garde and certainly European Expressionism. There are two concerns on this record and Newman focuses on the dual humanization of machinery and the mechanization of humanity. These works by Newman, and I include The Pleasure Principle and Telecon, have often been described as alienating, difficult, cold, synthesized and emotionally distant. Uh, well, yes, they are, but I think that's very much thematically uh, what has been strived for here. But the first Hubei Army album, I think even Replicas, does explore some, also some traditional instrumentation as well. I would say this record is, is fairly similar to the the wonderful Human League's debut album of the same year, Reproduction. Uh, but again, as one critic has pointed out, uh, uh, where the Human League album is heavily steeped in notions of apocalypse, Replicas is more concerned with isolation and alienation and searching for connection. There is a shift stylistically from the first Tubeway Army record, that fractured sense of paranoia, which, ex which is explored, I think, in greater detail on the pleasure principle. I mean, highlights on this album are many. Uh, me, I disconnect from you, the Mac men, you are in my vision. Uh, as well as the wonderful, uh, of course, Our Friends Electric, which is just sublime. And one of my favourites on this album is uh, Down in the Park. There's no doubt this album draws heavily from the same well as uh, bands like Ultravox, uh, Bowie and Kraftwerk. And it was an album that, believe it or not, was actually completed in a week. And also Replicas, um, it showcases Newman's developing aptitude for being a songwriter and producer, in fact. And I'll never forget that wonderful, wonderful performance of our friend's electric on uh, the old grey whistle test where he insisted on being bathed in white light to almost give it that bleaching, dehumanising effect. This is a remarkable record that explores the idea of uh, humanity and indeed the loss of humanity, which is why I think uh, it's an album you really should have in your collection. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you so much for being a Patreon and subscriber. I do urge you, if you haven't already done so, to click like, subscribe, and check that notification bell if you enjoyed this video. Do share it as well. Check out some of the links below this video for ways you can support the sterling work done at this channel. And other than that, I'll leave you with my, my closing salvo, which is, hope you're well, staying safe, but more importantly, that you keep listening.